this is a video about the LX Maker A3 Pro I bought from Banggood. It's a 2500 milliwatt laser engraver and it costs around £150. Here you can see a time lapse of me assembling it. Assembly was fairly easy, it took about three or four hours. There were a few issues with the instructions due to the fact it doesn't mention where the T-nut should go into the aluminium extrusion. So I had to dissemble a few bits to put them in. It's important to make sure all the parts are aligned properly and tightened. You don't want to over tighten them otherwise you can damage the parts or crack the acrylic. The belts mustn't have any slack in them to get the highest precision for the engravings. If they're too loose they can start to skip over the teeth of the pulley and obviously ruin your engraving. I don't really have much else to say about the build of it because it's fairly straightforward. So let's talk about the software. I am using the default software which is LXMaker Evolution Desktop Cam. It does have quite a few bugs in it however they're quite easy to work around once you know what they are and it does everything I want so I haven't bothered upgrading or changing it to a different software. One of the serious bugs I've noticed is if you set it to do multiple passes then click the preview button which draws a box around the area it will use it will then straight away continue to start doing the passes. This is incredibly bad because when you're doing a preview you want to line up the piece and if it starts cutting straight away then it could obviously ruin that. This is fairly easy to work around again though. All you have to do is make sure you don't set more than one pass when doing a preview. The next issue I had in the software was I discovered you have to run it in admin mode to allow outlines to work. The outline mode just does effect outline around any picture you put in it. So it's a very useful one to have. It's now fully assembled and time to test it out. This is where I discover the first issue with it. If you switch on the power for it before the control board is connected to the software, then the laser will actually turn on for about a second while it connects to the software. This is why it's a good idea to have a scrap piece of wood underneath. This issue is easy to work around. All you have to do is simply connect the control board to the software before applying power. Then when you apply the power, the laser won't turn on. Here I'm just testing all the axes working properly and moving smoothly. This was the first engraving I did on leather. It's the inside part of my wallet, so if it got damaged it didn't really matter. However, it turned out very well as you will see. This is a class 4 laser, which means it can cause instant and permanent damage to your eyes, even from reflections. It comes with safety glasses, which are green. They filter out most of the light from the laser. Um, here's a comparison of it, with and without safety glasses. I tested engraving the back of the mirror, and surprisingly it actually worked. I also noticed it seemed to have engraved the glass slightly as well. I then decided to test engraving glass, First of all using nail varnish, this worked well, however nail varnish is kind of a pain to paint over glass if you are doing any larger areas. I then moved on to using a black mark pen, which worked incredibly well as you'll see here. Now that the engraving is done, all we have to do is remove the black mark pen. I found an acetone based nail varnish remover worked incredibly well for this and then just washing it off with water and that's it. This is a 3D printed LED display I made. It takes any 3mm glass or acrylic and lights them up. You'll notice that the back side of the engraving actually looks brighter and better than the front side. This is the box I made for my laser. I made it mostly because of the fumes from the engraving as they can be toxic and smell incredibly bad. I used two 120mm PC fans for the fume extraction. I 3D printed a mount to go from the fan to a 
100mm duct which goes out of my window. I wanted a viewing window so I used amber acrylic which blocks out most of the 405mm laser light. This allows me to look into it so I can see how the grain is doing and make sure it's all going well without having to use my safety glasses. As you can see, my LX Maker laser engraver. I also have added LEDs on the inside the box so I can see the engravings more clearly. The fans and LEDs are all connected in parallel with the power supply. I have engraved a centimeter square grid on the bottom of the box. This helps aligning pieces, making sure they're straight. There is a 3D printed cover across the intake fan. This is to help direct airflow downwards across the piece that's being engraved and remove any smoke. Here you can see how the acrylic blocks out the laser light. There is a bug in the line by line engraving algorithm which causes it to be very inefficient sometimes. When engraving a line from left to right, there are no issues. However, if it then starts engraving from right to left and there are breaks in the line it's currently doing, it will start from the left hand most line segment. This basically means it constantly travels back over itself being incredibly inefficient. The fold line engraving algorithm is far more efficient. However, sometimes it won't generate correctly on some images and I don't know why. This can clearly be seen on the previews so it's only an issue if you aren't paying attention. The engraving you're seeing at the moment is done by the fold line because it's a lot quicker. And here's that engraving up close. Here's my name engraved for my leather wallet. It even works on coloured anodised aluminium as it burns away the pigment. It can cut through card. This was originally from a cereal box. And this is a laser cut box made from 3mm cardboard. This is leather taken from an old bag. I laser cut sections out of it to use for a mask. This is the Batman logo made from 3mm black acrylic. I even managed to cut through an 11mm foam floor tile. I was very excited to discover that I could paint metals with matte black spray paint, then etch a design into it, which would then be used as a stencil for electro etching, giving some incredibly detailed results. The token shown is made from galvanized steel, but it should be possible to do with almost any metal, although some highly corrosion resistant stainless steels, like 316, don't electro etch well and would require some kind of acid. I think that covers most of the things I've done with my lasers so far. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below.